we are having we've had 25 years of uninterrupted democracy and at the helm of affairs at this time is president bola ahmed tinubu and uh, him with all the governors that were sworn in uh, on the 29th of may 2023 have clocked one year and uh, we're zeroing in on what has been happening in plateau state we're looking at the challenges, successes of Governor Muftuang's administration. Our guest this morning to be telling us about what is happening in Plateau State is Musa Ashoms, Honorable Musa Ashoms. He is the Commissioner for Information, Plateau State. Good morning and welcome to the program, Honorable Ashoms. Good morning. Thank you for having me this morning. Okay. It's been 365 days and counting. Has it been a smooth ride or a bumpy one? Let's begin with that. Um, rides like this cannot just be smooth all the way. There are days that you have hurdles that you must cross. There are days that things go away and you're happy. And um, you know, governance is about breaking barriers. It's about setting new records. It's about doing things the right way. So as a government, we've been faced with our own challenges. We've been faced with our downtimes. And of course, we've had um, tremendous and outstanding achievements within the last one year. So glory to God, um, we are a year in office. But technically, you can see we are less than a year. Because the Supreme Court revalidated our mandates and the verdict of the people on the 12th of January. So we had um, temporary setbacks, litigations here and there, from tribunal to the Court of Appeals, up to the Supreme Court, the apex court of the land. So as a government, that didn't deter us from dishing out the dividends of democracy. You know, before we came in, there were attacks, incest land attacks in Mangu, Bokos, and um, we very to like look government. And our farmlands were destroyed by assailants, by people who came to take life, to kill, and to take over our land. But to the glory of God, the governor via the ASTC, Agricultural Services and Training Center, initiated a 900 hectare farm where soya beans was farmed so that people don't become hungry when, after the, the turmoil that faced them. So we now used the services of the agro rangers of the Nigerian Security Civil and uh, Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps to protect these farmlands. And at the end of the day, we got bomb for harvest. So the, the last one year has been um, a collage of the good, the bad, and the ugly. But the best of it is that God has um, pulled through to us. God has helped His Excellency by the King of Manasseh Mokhtuan to dish out the dividends of democracy to our people. In the last 365 days, one of the key achievements of this government is winning the confidence of the people. It's for the people to trust that, yes, there's a new sheriff in town, there is a new leadership um, pattern in town, and the man has all it takes to lead, and um, they're, they're not regretting giving him their mandate. So as a people, we are happy that our mandate is safe. We are happy that our steward is doing the right thing. We are happy that the governor that the people elected is on the seat. We are happy that the dividends of democracy is visible to the blind and is audible to the deaf. So our people on the plateau, as far as they are concerned, the Barrister Kelab Manase Mutuang, the governor of the United States, is redefining governorship, governance. He is redefining leadership. He is giving our people a new um, template for leadership, especially that before he came into power, we had a wonderful governor in Senator Jonah David Jang. Then, lo and behold, he started marching the reverse gear. That blank page started moving backwards. But we turned out that um, we are redefining, we are re strategizing, and we are resetting the condition of black states. And our people are extremely happy. Your reporter can go to town and do a box pop, and the result we will get is that of confidence is that that uh, people are seeing roads being constructed in the city of Jos, which we call the Jos mm -hmm. um, Metropolis, which, which um, is part of the greater Jos Bukuru master plan. We've had about 47 kilometers of roads 
that were either resurfaced, reconstructed, or rehabilitated. And it tells you that um, there is a governor that is serious with the development of larger states. There is a governor that understands development. There is a governor that has paraded new talents. They are going to help him achieve these dreams. So basically, Plato is on track. For those who have not been doing business with Plato, Plato is ripe for business. You should come and invest on the Plato. The weather is clement. The food here is, you can't get it elsewhere. 40% of the <laughs> Irish potato that Nigeria consumes come from Plateau states. It will have been more than that, if not for the killings in the great local governments that produce these goods. But we thank God that um, the issue of killing has gone very, very low. And we are hoping that um, going forward, it is something that will just um, vanish with God helping us and also us waking up. Because, you know, you don't just pray, you watch before you pray. So as a government, we are working. Uh, Honorable Ashrams, um, we, we thank you for that marathon that you have given to us yes, right yeah. now. We, we thank you for that marathon. Let's go into specifics now. We'll go back to security as uh, um, you have mentioned in passing and you've mentioned like almost everything. But you've said that one of the key things that the governor has done in the past 365 days is to build a confidence of the people in the government and to show that this government is a serious one we're also uh, wondering what how the people are taking it because we have news that um, in the previous administration some recruitments were made and this government as serious as he is is seriously sacking these people as well and uh, uh, that may not be something that the people will count as a dividend of democracy so what is really happening to the people who were given employment by the past administration that we hear are being sacked by Muftuan? Um, they were not sacked entirely. This, the picture that was painted is not a real one. When we came <coughs> in, the civil service was over, over bloated. For example, the Plateau State Polytechnic. We've had people who have lectured pro bono or on contract, as you would like to put it, for 15, 16 years. And if there's a window for, uh, for employment, they should have what is called the right of first refusal. Mm -hmm. But because the system doesn't want to pay for them, even students, they were still lecturing about employment while they were still there. If in the 16 years that you've been lecturing, you have found one thing, there is no need for you to be in the system. Mm -hmm. It means if they, were, they were being comfortable with parts or they were just keeping them for no just reason. People have invested their time People have sacrificed their intelligence to lecture, and when there's an opportunity, instead of you to give them the right of first refusal, some students that they were under their tutelage, people that were still students under them, they have not gone for the National Youth Service Corps, they have not gotten a certificate, they are given jobs in the uh, for the future. And you will begin to see that uh, it's embarrassing. And again, the number of non academic staff that were employed outweighs the, uh, the academic staff in an academic institution. People wanted to satisfy their political egos. They wanted to massage themselves politically. They wanted to pay their political allies with government uh, opportunities. So when we came in, there was a committee that was set up to review all of that, and the white paper came out, and they advised appropriately. Let me give you an, an instance with my own. The ministry, the ministry of Information and Communication. The, uh, the governor that uh, exited wrote that he has approved the appointment of 20 people. But when we came in, we had 39 people. And on the plateau, we have 17 local government areas. So when you complain that in the national uh, politics, plateau is being sidelined, there's no, uh, the, the principle of federal character is not adhered to. You should also bring state character when you're employed on the plateau. You will find out that a local government that has someone somewhere will have 15 people in an establishment and six to seven local government will not have an individual. So it, it was skewed with, uh, it was laced with sentiment. It was skewed to fear to, to favor certain interests. And we thought that under our watch, there should be what is called one plateau, plateau for all. And uh, we thought that um, people shouldn't be schemed out simply because they don't have someone to stand in for them. So the persons that we recruited at last were the same persons that were recruited. It's just that some had to go. 
We cannot overblot the civil service with inexperienced people. We cannot overblot the civil service with people from the same local government. Plato State is some same local government. So the principle of federal character was adhered to. So as a government, we didn't bring new persons. It's the same old people that um, were recruited by the previous administration that we have talked. So the issue of recruitment is done well. And I'm um, like um, people will always say, if someone is qualified under the APC for employment, and the same person is qualified under the PDP government for employment, it tells you that that person is qualified, whether he belongs to the political party or not. So we're not thinking about the political party. We're putting platform first, and the interest in the, in, the, in the general analysis, in the final analysis, is plateau state. So for us, if in the beginning, plateau, in the middle, plateau, at the end, plateau. And we have a governor that understands governance, that does not allow sentiments to eclipse his reasoning in the person of His Excellency by Mr. Caleb Manasseh Mutuang. You know, in the past, when our governor goes to a community and he wants to speak, people are scared of what he will say. We have a governor today that, that speaks on, on scripted, that understands Plato. If Plato were a book, we would say he has read it from over to over, over and over. So it's a governor that came with a clear court agenda, with a template for development, with a, manifest, with a manifesto that is pro Plato, with a mind that he wants to leave leg a legacy that posterity will remember him for good. We have a governor that after eight years, it will be said that um, one Caleb, son of Manasseh Mutuan, led Plato State to glory. That is all we are after. We are a transparent government, we are an accountable government, we are a government that is full people, we are a government that is going to change the fortunes of Plato State, we are a government that is going to give an outstanding leadership, we are a government that is going to give a new template for leadership on the Plato and in Nigeria, so that we will become a reference point. And that foundation has been set. People have seen it, people have, have felt it, and people have touched it. And um, we're going to continue on that um, pedestrian until we go. Because we know very well, I will understand the maxim, the blue card that says, better the end of the matter than the beginning. So we want to finish very, very soon. We've seen governors who think legacies is uh, just in building roads where they the challenge is not even much building flyovers in places where nobody ever gets to use the flyover and all that and misplacement of priorities we're worried about what our governors think about human capital development now in plateau state what plan does the governor have what is he doing as at now or what does he hope to do to build human cap uh, capital in jaws especially as it concerns the youth what are these things what are these programs put in place to make sure that the youths are empowered enough i'm not talking about giving them uh, motorbikes or giving them uh, uh, sewing machines and all that they are empowered educationally to contribute also meaningfully to the state and the country what are the plans for the youths especially our governor not long ago traveled to the united states of america where we are we have uh, secured partnership with some universities and for postgraduate and scholarship so that Plateau people will be exposed to modern education facility. You know, the world is going AI. We cannot be using um, obsolete ways of um, educating our people. And you recall that um, in the past, young people like me wouldn't have been the one having this meeting with you this morning. So by appointing young people, you are even exposing them to leadership. You are exposing them to new trends. We are giving them the experience and the exposure and the education for them to become future leaders. And it will interest you to know that uh, not long ago, we were 340 youths, that is 20 per local government, were taken to SCC farms along Kefi Abuja, where they are exposed to modern way of doing agribusiness. And we are hoping that that will be cascaded. And um, that's just the first tranche, because in the final analysis, we would like to have 100 per local government which will translate to 1,700. Once you have 1,700 serious farmers, you've transformed the state already. If you go to the United of America, it is only about 3% of the entire country that are farmers, and they are feeding the world. If you go to Ukraine, the number of farmers there is not um, very bogus, but because they are exposed to modern ways of doing business, modern technology, 
new ways of doing Arabic. So we have exposed our youth to this modern trend, and we are hoping that we will have more of them. And not long ago, the um, Commissioner for Youth and Sports Development was in Turkey to strike deals with foreign clubs for us, and he was in Spain to see how Plato footballers can be exported, their talents can be exported, so that you can earn us foreign um, exchange. And again, not long ago, someone that is living in Broca from the Port Function, a 13 year old child, went to Marathon in Kaduna and he won. And the state didn't relent, they sponsored him to Kenya, where he came second. All the people that came from first to tenth, apart from him, that came second are Kenyans. So we're exposing Plato sons and daughters to Marathon. And you remember that even the Rivers Marathon that just ended, number of people where you have foreigners, Ethiopians, Kenyans and rest. The plateau song came first. So we're trying to create a climate of sporting activities for our people. So that at the end of the day, we will do end foreign um, exchange. So that families will be liberated. And I'm um, the general manager of Mighty Jets in Rock Club, Mr. Ferdinand Umbum, who originally hails from Cross River State, traveled to the UK to strike a deal with some clubs for us. And some universities are also declaring interest in Nigerian athletes because they want us to go and study there and represent them in different kinds of sports. So as a state, we are not going to relent on that. And it will interest you to know that in the transition committee of our local governments, all the five members of the transition committee are below 40. We are exposing them to leadership. We are exposing them to, to qualitative leadership. So that at that level, you have people that understand what leadership is. So that if they are given another opportunity to step up, they have had experiences. So on the blood too, we realize that um, the gap is also leadership. So we are training people to have that um, leadership experience so that at the end of the day, it will be written that we came, we saw, and we delivered. And you know, this governor has done well in the area of agriculture. For the first time in a long time, or for the first time in the history of Plata states, we've given 40 bags of fertilizer to each polling unit so that we will step up our agricultural activities at that level. And it will interest you to know that in this agricultural season, there's a collaboration, there's a synergy between the Plateau Youth Council and the Ministry of Agriculture, where a thousand hectares was dedicated for PYC to farm at the back farms in Zalaki on the Plateau. That is a farm that has been abandoned for years. It is about how many, and it is close to 10,000 hectares or more. And surprisingly, it has been abandoned for years. So for us to even take um, charge of the environment and to secure the environment, we have engaged the Plateau Youth Council with a thousand hectares in the first instance so that they will till the land, cultivate and harvest at the end of the day. So we're exposing our people to agriculture, which is one of our strengths as far as the state is concerned. You know, Plateau, Binway and some other states in Nigeria have feed the West African sub-region. So we are not going to relent on that. As a state, we have, we have understood our strength, and we are going to rely on it, and we are going to make an indelible mark in that area. Mm. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you, you said, um, <clears throat> let's just mention it in passing if we can, uh, that uh, uh, 40 bags of fertilizer was given to every pulling unit. Is, that's, that's very, very laudable. But what system did you use to drop this at every pulling unit? Did you just go and drop it there and say, uh, uh, share it according to how your needs are? Or do you have a system that documents yeah. farmers and all that? Because we don't have data in Nigeria. So there's a possibility you give to a, a councillor in that ward and he just goes and gives to political uh, allies and that's the end. What system are you using to make sure that whatever uh, is due for farmers gets to the right farmers that need it? We've been into politics for a while, so it's not everything that we want to be politically correct. We engaged our traditional rulers, the Christian Association of Nigeria, Jamaat al Nasr Islam, the civil society organizations and the Plateau Youth Council. They were part of those that were in the committee for sharing so that it doesn't end up in the hands of politicians. Yes, there might be skirmishes here and there because there's human arrangement. You know, man and machine are objects of failure. It is only God that is perfect. But as a government, we made sure that at least 80 to 90 percent gets to our people. So the mechanism for follow up, for follow through, for monitoring, for evaluation. We, we crossed the T's and we dotted the I's. So like I, like I told you, 
on the plateau, the Commissioner of Agriculture, like any other commissioner, is well um, read, is ready for governance. We are taking data of farmers from the southern zone now and the central zone because of the experiences we've had in the past. We don't want fertilizers to end up in stores. We don't want fertilizers to end up in the hands of partner of a cartel. So as a government, we want to make sure that it ends in the hands of farmers. However little or however minute it will be, let it end in the farms of plateau states, people. And then um, we recall that when we are taking data and the 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 application we are using, you must be in the community because before it will take cognates. Mm. You must be in that community as you're doing your um, environmental assessment. It will send signal to the server that Musa is in Zandi and Musa is taking notes. So if you don't go to Zandi, the data of Zandi people cannot be entered in the system. So I don't know how they created that, but you know, artificial intelligence world is uh, becoming something else. And uh, we are taking data because we don't feel in. The old data was flawed with um, a lot of political sentiments. People that um, should have been given fertilizer to other people are also taken because they feel it's from government. So we want those that deserve this um, farm inputs, these interventions, to also be, to always be the ones that will benefit from it. So as a government, we are putting everything in place to make sure that our people benefit from government interventions. So that it doesn't just become something that is on paper and does not translate what our people get. So basically, that's what we're doing as a government. Okay, um, <clears throat> let's go back to security now. You did mention that uh, to help farmers uh, be secure in their farmlands, you have employed the services, or if I got you right, of uh, NSCDC and other security agencies to make sure that uh, the people are protected while they're doing that. How is that paying off in the first place? And let me combine that with uh, another one that you may just answer uh, a yes or no, if you may. Um, how is the governor taking the issue of state police? Because a lot of people are saying that this is one of the reasons or this is one of the things that will make sure that our, our society is secured enough, state police. But a, a lot of governors are against it. A lot of governors are saying they cannot foot the bill or whatever reason they are giving. What is uh, the disposition of the governor of Plateau State on this? And then how is uh, the, the security that you employed, so to speak, uh, the NICDC and whatever other agency that you employed, how is that paying off uh, to secure the people? Because they need security before they can go back to the farm. No matter how many fertilizers you give to them, they can't go into the farm if they cannot uh, be secure or feel secure at all. Now, we took cognizance of the issues you just raised because as a government, we do a short analysis of everything we do. We look at the strength, the weakness, the opportunities, and the threats. And in implementing, we use the smart idea where we are very, very specific. Whatever we do is measurable, and we know that it's going to be achievable. And um, when we check whether the result uh, is going to be time-bound, so we fix a time for everything that we do as a state. And it will interest you to know that it is not just um, the civil defense that we engage. It is the agro rangers that are protecting our farms. So the relationship between us and security architecture and the black tool is very, very cordial and mutual. And um, we want to thank them for protecting us, even though there's room for more to be done. And um, if the government does not have a position when it comes to the issue of state security or state police. It is the position of plateau people that the governor is projecting. So it's not a personal thing. Once your people are being killed, once you experience pogrom, once you experience annihilation, once you experience cleansing, once you experience people taking over your land, you will have no choice than to ask for state police because your people understand the topography better. They know the geography of their community. They understand the language of their community. If you bring somebody from Bayelsa or you bring somebody from Legima to focus local government, it will take him plenty of years or even time to acclimatize and understand the language of the people and understand when the people are shouting for phone or when they are screaming or when they are asking for help. So it's easier and better to have state policing and people will not just allow people to come into their community and slaughter them at night or at the break of dawn and disappear into the thin air. It will be your brother, your sister, your nephew, your niece. So you will protect them. 
In fact, there is a language you will speak with them that they will understand better. So the idea of state policing is um, an, an old issue. It is something that we should trust, we will have trashed by now, because it's obvious that the federal policing system has failed to a large extent, and there is a need for us to open our hearts to new ideas. We're not saying the federal policing should be abolished entirely, but it should be a collapse of the state policing and of course the federal policing. In the in the interest of our communities, we should do that. And you know we have a robust security activity operation Rambo on the plateau that has been in existence for over twelve years. So it's not a new thing, it's just that it needs the the, the, the legislation of this country to approve some of these things that we do. So that our people will protect themselves. You know, black people are very, very brave, but we cannot take the loss into our hands. Well, if we are allowed to protect ourselves, there is no Jupiter that can come and come to us. Mm. There is nobody that can just come and slaughter people on the eve of Christmas and, and walk away. So there are me 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 mechanisms that will be put in place in the interest of the safety of Nigeria. We cannot be doing the same thing over and over again and getting a bad result and continue doing it. It means you like getting bad results. But if you want to get good results, you should change how you do your stuff. You should revise the way you do your things. And you should look at new ways of doing things. So as a state, we are right for state policing, and we are advocating for it. And that is what our governor, Mr. Caleb Manasseh, moved on is advocating for. Because when you hear Vox Populi, Vox State, the voice of the people is the voice of God. Mm. So should we say no to the voice of the people or the voice of God? No. Okay, so how, let me go back to that. How is it paying off the policies on uh, security? What, what you are... Your, your strategies in security, how are they paying off? How would you rate the level of success so far? We cannot speak about this, our strategy on national TV. That would be defeated, self-defeating. How would you rate the success? Hmm. Our strategy our strategy is 10 over 10. It's just the result that we're after. Because in the interest of our people, the grant norm gives the government responsibility of security lives and uh, property, welfare of the people, very, very important. So we wouldn't take that with levity, wouldn't handle that with kids' love. We are very, very serious, and um, our governor is a very, very serious governor, governor and um, we will not play with the lives of our people. The lives of our people are very, very important to us. Honorable, I didn't seem to hear you anymore. Okay, well, um, Let's move away from security. Uh, you're comfortable with what the results are, um, uh, whatever you're doing in security. Let's move over to some other things uh, that we are interested in. Uh, we, we, we'll talk about health and, uh, and education, but let's begin with education. What is the government doing, or what is the plan of the government, if they are not already doing it, to make sure that education is better in this administration than any other one? Okay, it will interest you to know that not long ago, like two, three days back, we had a committee that will review the courses that we have in our tertiary institutions to see whether some of them have become obsolete, to see how some of them will even touch our lives directly as a people. You know, you shouldn't just be offering courses in the interest of having them in universities, your polytechnics, college of education, and monotechnics. You should um, upgrade and upscale. So the, the, the His Excellency Vice Secular Manazem Mutuan constituted a committee headed by a professor of architecture who happens to come from Kaduna State. So we tell you that we do not do our things laced with sentiments. We look at those that can handle it. He was the vice chancellor of the Bingham University in Kaduna Sarawak State. He was he was um he has been a lecturer with the Ahmadu University for a long time. He was in Kaduna State University. He's been to different universities of the world. So the, co the committee was constituted to look at the curriculum of our tertiary institutions to see whether they are up to standards, whether they are up to date, or they are become obsolete and antediluvian. So as a government, we are looking at that. And again, it will interest you to note that when we step in, there are courses in the federal in Plateau State University, Plateau State Polytechnic, College of Education Gindri, that have failed accreditation. So as a government, we put the right things in motion and we made sure that these courses gained accreditation. If at all, people that study such courses will not be mobilized for the National Youth Service Corps, 
they wouldn't their certificates are not recognized. And it will interest you to know that if you go to Bauchi, which is a neighboring state, 60% of the students in the Federal Polytechnic Bauchi are from Plateau State. From Plateau State means about 40% of them are indigenous of Plateau State, about 20% of them are people that live on the Plateau because you have incessant strikes in our institutions. But since we came in to the glory of God, the unions have cooperated, they've not gone on strike because we realized that this is our plateau. We cannot afford to take our people to states that in education shouldn't be at, at par with us. And we made sure that um, we got accreditation and this time that audio uh, there um, but we have dealt with a lot of issues here and we've been talking with the Commissioner for Information uh, in uh, Plateau State uh, he's been telling us the challenges the governor is facing uh, the challenges he has been able to surmount the roadmap of the present administration in Plateau State and uh, would like to just at this point say thank you to him we just lost uh, can you hear me honorable Okay, would like to say clearly. yes. Um, I wish we had more time, but I think uh, we'll we'll be seeking update on the issues that you have raised here. How uh, the governor is faring in the one year he has been in office, but we can always uh, can only wish you well and hope that you will do even more than you have said that you are doing right now in the coming days. Yes. Uh, we hope that the road infrastructure, the health sector, and all that are being covered. Uh, well by this administration. So we'd just like a final word from you uh, to the people of Nigeria and especially to the people of Plateau State as we wrap up. So you know, we have not even spoken about our transport sector, where for the first time in a long time, trains are moving on the Plateau, where we have our metro buses, where we have um, Siena buses that move from Lagos to Abuja, unlike before where we had um, all the cars that were very, very old, but today in the transport sector, we have done a lot. Uh, people for the first time are having this metro experience and they're enjoying their rides from one point of those to another, just at the rate of 200 naira. Then we've not spoken about our Ministry of Justice, which has even delved into agriculture. If we go to the Ministry of Urban, 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 Urban Development, you realize that a lot of things is happening there. When you go to our land administration these days, you don't need to queue up in the Ministry for Lands and Survey, Land Survey and Town Planning. A lot of things have been disguised. You can do e-governance. Uh, governor's signature is now e-signature. And again, on the platform, we have our State Executive Council meeting sometimes online via Zoom. So we are, we are taking e-governance very seriously. If we go to the health sector, not long ago, we have employed 22 consultants to help us with the alien health sector on the platform. So a lot of things is happening here on the plateau. We have um, people that are coming to build markets. We have the special agri-processing zone coming in with um, the support of African Development Bank. We've had ambassadors of different countries coming to plateau states to look at the potentials because the governor has um, brought back. Yeah. Uh, that's why I said a final word. I know that's why I said uh, there's going to be update from Plateau State because I know there are a lot of ground. There's a lot of ground we should have covered, but we cannot cover because of a lack of time. Uh, at this point, would like to just say thank you to you, Honorable, for being a part of our show and uh, giving us uh, uh, in detail some of the th activities that you have done. We may have to invite you back uh, some other time. Uh, so that you can give us more, uh, especially in the areas that we have not touched. Because we are interested in the metro life that you were talking about and so many other things that you just mentioned in passing. But our time is up, unfortunately. And we'd like to say thank you to you uh, for this opportunity. Thank you for having me. Mm. All right. Uh, we've been talking with uh, uh, the Commissioner for Information in Plateau State, and he was telling us about the challenges of the present administration in that state, Plateau State, and uh, would like to say thank you to him. And at this point, um, okay, his name, name is Musa Ashoms, Commissioner for Information Plateau State. At this point, we'd like to say thank you to you for being a part of our show this morning. And remember, today is uh, World Environment Day. World Environment Day, everybody is expected to plant a tree, everybody is expected to behave in such a way that our environment will be preserved for our own benefit. So what are you doing today to preserve the environment? Ask yourself this question. So 
Uh, let's do this again tomorrow, and uh, we're hoping that uh, you're still going to join us for another program. Uh, in the meantime, my name is Nyamgul Agadji on behalf of the entire crew saying thank you for being there and see you tomorrow. <laughs>